our uh, 0 0.5 some flying square roots. This is a skill that we will use often in this class and um, math classes beyond this one. And so objectives, students will be able to simplify square roots. Square roots like the square root of 45 can be simplified to its equivalent and preferred version of three square root five. And I'm gonna explain how I do that in example one. But it's just important for you to understand that if you can simplify these, you need to. And so here's the basic way that I teach people how to do this. And it works pretty well. What you want to do is you want to take your number on the inside and you want to think of anything that multiplies up to that number. For example, the one that comes to my mind is, I'll do it in blue, is 9 and 15. So you could think that this is the same thing as a square root of 9. Sorry, not 9 and 15, 9 and 5. All right. And then you just want to keep going with this. So 5 is a prime number. That doesn't break down anymore. But 9 does break down. And if you think about it, doesn't it break down to 3 times 3? So you could think of that as square root 3 times square root 3 times square root 5. Or what I would rather do is I'd rather think of this as square root 3 squared times square root 5. Either way, my point is when you take the square root of something and then square it, or if you square something and then take the square root, these are opposite functions. They cancel each other out. So this turns into simply three square root five. Okay, so that's kind of one way to think of it, to do it. I want to show you another way. I'll do it in red. Remember, we're just trying to think of anything that multiplies up to this. Let's say that instead of it being 45, um, I'm sorry, instead of it being 9 and 5, let's say it's 15 and 3. So we could think of this as this like the square root of 15 times the square root of 3. And so 3 is prime. It doesn't break down anymore. But 15 does break down. And if you think of that, that breaks down to square root 3 times square root 5. Well, look. Again, you have a square root 3 and a square root 3. I'm just looking at the ends of my little tree here that I made. In fact, I could have done a tree here as well. I could have said, you know, that breaks down to that, and I was just copying that down, if you like. So, since, again, we're stuck with a square root 3 times a square root 3, well, you could think of this a few different ways. For example, right, like I said, square root 3 times square root 3, same thing as square root 3 squared, or it's the same thing as simply square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So, all the point is, all of this breaks down to it that it's just 3. The square roots get canceled out. And so you're left with 3 square root 5. So there's a couple different ways to do it. I wanted to show you that it doesn't even matter if I pick the right two numbers. Like I picked 9 and 5 that multiply up to 45 and 15 and 3 that multiplies up to 45. And they both break down. You end up with 3 red 5 either way. So that's the, the key here. You're looking for doubles because if you have a square root of something times a square root of something, the square root's just going to cancel out and you could bring it on the outside of the square root. That's the basic idea here. Don't worry if you're confused. We're going to do a few more. I think you'll catch on. Um, why don't I go ahead and do example number two with you to give you a... Actually, why don't you guys try practice number one, and then we'll talk about it and, uh, and check your work. Okay, so here's what I did. I said, hey, you know what's equal to 12 is 3 times 4. So square root of 3 times square root of 4 is the same thing as 12. 3 doesn't break down anymore, but 4 certainly does. It's square root 2 times square root 2. Um, or you could think of that as 2 squared underneath the square root, or the square root of 2 squared. doesn't really matter. The point is the square root and the square cancel each other out. Or you could also just say, what's the square root of 4? Well, isn't it just 2? So you're left with a square root of 3 and a 2. The 2 goes in the front. The square root goes at the end. You could put the little dot there, or you could just write it as 2 times square root 3. That's what that means. Okay, that was how I did it with... I did that with three and four. I want to show you that you get the exact same answer if you pick two different numbers. So let's say instead of three and four, I said uh, square root of two and the square root of six. So square root of two doesn't break down anymore. It's prime, but six does, right? Can't you break that down to, so bring down this. We still have square root of two, but isn't six the same thing as two times three? So we could say that's square root of two times square root of three. Hey, look, again, there's a pair. Square root times itself cancels out, so we're just left with 2 square root 3. Boom. 2 rad 3. Okay, so hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. All we're doing is breaking this down 
into factors or numbers that multiply up to that number on the inside. So let's go ahead and go to example number two. And this one's a little bit different because it already has a number out front. Don't worry, it's really not a big deal. It's still super easy. So we still need something that multiplies up to 72. So we could pick any two numbers. The first two that come to my head are eight and nine. And you'll see it'll, it'll work fine if we do eight and nine. There is a better choice, which I'll show you in a second, but I'm just gonna show you that it doesn't really matter what two you pick, you'll still get to the same answer. So 72 is the same thing as the square root of eight times the square root of nine. And right away you might notice something. Square root of nine, you should know what that is. Is it nine three times three? So you could just go ahead and say, well, that's three. So I already have a three here. This is equal to three, so I'm gonna bring that out in front. So that's times another three. And then I have a square root of eight. But then you have to ask yourself, can I keep breaking this down? And yes, you can, right? Eight is four times two. So I can think three times three, we already know. That's nine. And eight, we could write as the square root of four times the square root of two. Once again, you should see square root of four. You should know what that is. You could break it down as square root two times square root two, or you could just say, hey, you know what? The square root of four is two. So you have nine times two times square root two. Nine times two is 18. And so you have 18 times the square root of two is your final answer because two doesn't break down anymore. Okay, that was a little bit long, but it was pretty easy. The shortcut here to make it really quick is to think of, right, we got nine as a perfect square, we got four as a perfect square, but what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 72? Well, the biggest perfect square is 36. So I wanna show you a way that you could do this to make it really quick. This is three times 36, or the square root of 36 times the square root of two. And that's because Three, or two times 36 is 72. So I just broke it down to these two. Well, that you should recognize. What is the square root of 36? It's six. And so you could just go, okay, well this is simply three times six times the square root of two. Three times six is 18. And we have 18 square root of two or 18 red two, boom. Notice we got the same thing. It doesn't really matter how we break it down. The point is that we just have to keep breaking down the numbers until it doesn't break down anymore. All right. That being said, I want you to try practice two, give it a shot, pause the video, work on it, and then unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, hopefully you saw the big perfect square that goes into this, that's 25. 25 times three is 75, so you could think of this as two times square root of 25 times three. Well, the square root of 25 is five, two times five is 10, so you just have 10 square root three or 10 rad three. Okay, great, well, what if I didn't see the big perfect square? What if I saw, well, I know there's fives in there. What if I said, okay, two times the square root of five times five times 15 is 75. Okay, well, neither of these are perfect squares, so I just have to keep going. The five doesn't break down anymore, but the 15 does. Isn't that five times three? And look at there. You have that pair again, and square root five times square root five is simply five. So you could think of this as two times five times square root three or 10 square root three. Boom, and we are done, all right? So that's how you're gonna do those types of problems. All right, and let's move on to adding and subtracting. So before you can add or subtract radicals, they must all be put in the most simplified form. Um, notice that this one is already simplified, but this one is not, right? So we wanna simplify these down bef um, before we can add or subtract them. Then we can add or subtract the ones that are uh, alike, just like, uh, just like with variables. So let me show you what I mean. Zoom in here. So like I said, this is already simplified, but that's not. So let's think about how we could simplify 27. What are two things that go into 27? Well, to me, the first thing that I think of is, uh, I'm gonna rewrite this, four square root three minus I think of nine and three. So couldn't I think of this as square root nine times square root three? And hey, there we go. We already have a perfect square. Square root of nine is three. So this is really like saying four square root three minus three square root three. Now that these are the same, see how these are exactly the same? You can treat it just like variables. So like, just remember like, remember when we do like four X minus three X, that would just equal one X. Well, the same thing's true here. Four rad three minus three rad three, well, that's just simply one rad three. Or you could just say rad three, you don't really need the one there. That's all there is to it. All right, so on practice number three, I want you to do the same thing, but I will give you a little heads up. 
both of these need to be simplified. Both of these need to be simplified. So go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, you know, pause the video first and then uh, check back when you're ready. Check your work. Okay, so 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2, and 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. 9 is a perfect square, so the square root of 9 is 3. 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 3 here, the square root of 9, this is really 3. This is really 2, so we have 3 times 3, which is 9, 2 times 2, which is 4, and then all, both of them have a square root of 2 left. So now these are exactly the same, so you could just subtract. 9 minus 4 is 5, so this is 5 square root 2. That's it. That's all there is to it, just finding it so that these are exactly the same. Okay, for the summary, I got a little like thought exercise I want you to think about. So we kind of talked about this in the video, but I want you to kind of be able to do this on your own. So first, think about the fact that we said before, like square root 3 is the same thing as square root 3 squared, right? So what does a square root 3 squared equal? And, I, and remember, we talked about this, that these are opposite actions, so the square root and the square cancel out. So you, it's just 3. With that idea, what do the following equations equal? So I want you to think through and solving these out. And hopefully you'll see that there's a really simple thing to observe here. Um, because I want you to understand how the square root and the square work. And then um, when you figure out all of these, I want you to, in your own words, describe why this is the case. This is the part that I really want you to focus on. Why does this, why does this work like that? And we did talk about it in the video, but go ahead and give it a shot. All right, see you guys in the next video.